So good morning and welcome. My name is Reverend Dr. Ron Fox, and I'm so glad to welcome you to our Sunday service for the Center for Spiritual Living Space Coast. And as I do every week, I want to say if there's somebody watching this this morning or during the week that's never been to a Center for Spiritual Living, we believe there's one God, many paths to that God, and we're here to love, honor, and support you no matter what your divine path is. And the Center for Spiritual Living Space Coast is a safe haven for people of all beliefs and lifestyles, whoever you are and wherever you may find yourself on your journey of faith, you're welcome here. And so this morning to begin our service, our practitioner, Jimmy Panic is gonna open us with a prayer and then Ed Powers will do a reading for us. So let us move into this sacred space of now where everything is possible, everything is available and that all is good and very good and we are supported. So we know in our hearts and our minds that God is everywhere present. God is the same today as God was yesterday and will be tomorrow and forever and ever. God is living within each one moving through each one and we court the presence we call the presence forward and we see it manifest in our lives as divine right action we are never alone we are always in the presence in the warmth and joyous and ever-loving presence that guides us and nurtures us and calls us its own it calls us good and very good it calls us beloved and so I know this morning that Dr. Reverend Ron Fox will speak the word of truth that will open our hearts and minds to a greater understanding, a greater reality, a greater way to bring forth this presence and to see it in a way that we have never seen before and to join with it in a way that is joyful and a way that is knowing that it is forever and ever available to us. And we are its child, it birthed us into existence and cares for us today, tomorrow, and always. And so I am grateful for the Center for Spiritual Living Space Coast. I'm grateful for the volunteers and all the members of the church and anyone out there that listens to this message. I send forth a blessing of peace, love, and harmony. And so I release this truth into the great I am, into the great I am that always says yes. And so please say with me, and so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Jenny. One of our core beliefs is that God is everything. From that, we can assume that God is in us. We are a part of God. We can also assume that we live in God. Trees are also a part of God, and God is in there. Same for flowers, bugs, buildings and roads, Mother Earth, the sun and moon, everything. Alone, meaning no other humans in sight? Look for other forms of God. You're standing on God, wearing God, breathing God, even eating God. Think about that at dinner tonight. <laughs> Alone, you just can't get away from God. It's actually pretty crowded when you look for other forms of God. And one last thing, living in God means there are no mistakes. Everything happens for the ultimate good. So look for the good. Having solitude can be a blessing. And now, Reverend Dr. Ron Fox will tell you that you are not alone. Thank you, Ed. So in case anybody didn't get it, that's my title this morning. You are not alone. And I want to, I want to begin uh, with, um, well, let me just say, I'm going to give a lot of examples. When I thought about preparing this today, I thought one of the best ways to learn about how we're not alone is to give examples. And so my, my talk's probably a little heavy 
on examples today. Just a warning. Um, I want to begin with a quote from John Donne, who wrote, no man is an island of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. Therefore, never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. So I want to begin. Piero Ferrucci, I've spoken about him before. He's written a number of really wonderful books um, on caring and kindness. And um, in one of his books, he, he talks about, he lives in Italy, and he talks about how he lives way out in the countryside. And so in order for him to get to the highway so he can get to work, he has to drive over a lot of back roads. And one day he finds himself following somebody who's on a tractor. And every few meters, uh, Ferrucci says, this fellow stops to speak to somebody on the side of the road. And he goes on and he stops again and again. And the road, it's a back road. Like I said, it's too narrow for Ferrucci to pass him. And he can't blow his horn because that would be considered so rude in, in the society of Italy that it's just something that's not done. And he's getting angrier and angrier and all he can do is wait. And then he says, he realized what's going on, that this man on the tractor belongs to a web of relationships, whether it's parents, friends, children, they're all bound together by the same customs for generations. And he said, so what this fellow was doing, he, he was stopping to respect his connections. He was affirming his sense of belonging. And, and Ferrucci says a, a sense of belonging is something that we all need because it answers the question, what am I a part of? What am I a part of? And, and he goes on, he says, our, our affiliations define us and, and give us a reason for existing w without belonging to something. We, we would feel like, like nothing. Uh, and he said, our sense of belonging is a basic need, like food, like water, like, like a roof over our head. You know, when you think about it, I think what really brings us joy in spiritual life is what we can give to a community, what, what we can give of ourselves. We come together in a community when we share love, when we share kindness, and when we share compassion. Gandhi once said, the fragrance always remains on the hand that gives the rose. So I want to give you another example of somebody reaching out and seeing how, how we're all bound together. So Rachel Remen, I've talked about her before, is a doctor. And she, at the time she wrote this book, she had suffered from Crohn's disease for 47 years. She, it's even longer now, but she had suffered from Crohn's for 47 years. And sometimes it would abate and sometimes it would, in this particular instance she's writing about, she started to have some really, um, really different and odd symptoms. And the doctors couldn't find out what it was. And she started to get the sense that they were getting really tired of hearing her come with these complaints. So she stopped talking about it. And then she went to a new doctor and he listened 
to everything she said. He said, tell me, why are you here? And, and he listened to her. And he said to her, I'm not sure what's going on with you, but we'll wait together. You and I will wait together. He couldn't give her a diagnosis, but what he offered her was caring and companionship, a willingness to face the unknown with her. And she said that lifted her loneliness. It made all the difference in the world to her. Someone cared enough and gave her the courage to deal with whatever would happen next. You know, when I read that this week, it reminded me of something in my own life that I'll share with you. When my ex-wife and I were separated, I, and, and I just have to say, we're really in a good place now. Okay, it's been a long time. We're in a good place. But um, we weren't then. And I asked her, I stayed in the house with the kids and I paid for her to stay in a hotel. And I asked her to come back uh, one time because I had, was going on a business trip. And when I came back, she had taken a moving van, moved all of our furniture and kidnapped our kids and left me a long note. And it was maybe the worst day of my life. And I called my best friend and he came over and we walked through the house, the empty house. And when we did after, I was so shook. And what I remember is he took his hand and he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Ron, don't worry, we'll get through this. He didn't say you'll get through it. He said, we'll get through it. And I didn't feel alone anymore. It was such a great, wonderful way. That's what we're talking about. We're never alone. So Barbara DeAngelis wrote what I think is a really great book. It's one of my favorite books. It's called Real Moments. And she talks in there and she said, you know, real moments are created between people when there's intimacy, when, when the boundaries between two people melt and our hearts touch. And she said, love makes everything sacred. It offers the opportunity for deep spiritual awakening. Because when we love somebody, our boundaries dissolve and, and we transcend the illusion of separation. And, and I wanna read to you uh, what she said was her vision for her and her husband's relationship. And, and then I'll tell you why I'm reading this. There are three things. The first one, she said they were brought together for the purpose of helping each other grow. They're each other's teacher. Second thing she said, the relationship is a precious gift. It will take them through what they need to learn. And the third thing she said was the challenges and difficulties they experience will illuminate their most needed lessons. Now I wanna read them again. Think about that rather than just a couple's relationship. Think about all of us living in this community and being, being together. Can we see that we were brought together for the purpose of helping each other grow and that we're each other's teachers? Can we see that our relationship, our community, is a gift that could take us through what we need to learn? And can we see that the challenges and difficulties that we will experience will teach us what our most needed lessons are? It's all here for us. So Rachel Remen, who I just talked about, writes in one of her books, when she was teaching, I think it was at Stanford, they had Carl Rogers come in to talk about his um, 
beliefs about psychology and about humanity. And he uh, asked if there would be a volunteer in the audience who would like to have him have a session with them in front of the group. And somebody volunteered. And then Rogers turned to the group. And I've read this before. And I personally look at this maybe once a month. Because for me, let me read it and then I'll tell you why. Here's what Rogers said before he did the session with this young fellow. He said, before every session, I take a moment to remember my humanity. There is no experience this man has that I cannot share with him. No fear that I cannot understand. No suffering that I cannot care about because I too am human. No matter how deep his wound, he does not need to be ashamed in front of me. I too am vulnerable. And because of this, I am enough. Whatever his story, he no longer needs to be alone with it. This is what will allow his healing to begin. I see that as a goal, how I would love to be able to look at everybody I meet like that. And I know I'm not there yet, but isn't that a goal we can all have to just know and care and love and accept everybody that we meet. Because, you know, somebody once said, everybody's fighting a great war, so be kind. So, Ram Das and Paul Gorman wrote a book titled, How Can I Help? And they have a vignette in there about a woman whose dad is dying. He's in the hospital, he has cancer. She lives a thousand miles away. So she doesn't get to see him that often, but she comes in one day to the hospital, walks into his room and says, whoops, I'm in the wrong room. The fellow in the bed is hairless, he's pale, his breathing is labored, and he looks like he's near death. She turns to leave the room and then freezes. And she said, oh my God, that's my father. And I didn't recognize him. And it brings to mind to her, Mother Teresa's saying about Christ in all his distressing disguises. And what she writes is over the next couple of months, she would stay with him and she would shave him and bathe him and help him. And she said she had a bond. They develop a closer bond and that he gave her a gift. And the gift was the chance to see him as more than her father. The chance to see that they share a common identity of spirit. It's a common identity that they both share. And she said, when we break through and meet spirit behind our separateness, we experience profound moments of companionship. And that's where true compassion arises. And she said, because she saw it with her dad, now she could see it in anybody. What a great goal that would be, to be able to look beyond our separateness and see how we're all, we're all one and we're all in this together. So Jack Cornfield, um, who I, I love his writings, he's a Buddhist teacher. And he said, you know, when we go through hard times, one of the things that we feel is like we're all alone. And he said, we never are all alone. And he tells a story about a time that he and Pema Chodron were addressing a group of people. He said there were about 3,000 people in the group and they were talking about compassion. And a woman got up 
and she was obviously distressed. And she said her life partner had committed suicide a few weeks before. And she was feeling anger and grief and guilt and loss and all alone. And Cornfield said to the group, if there's anybody here who's experienced suicide from a family member or somebody you're close to, would you stand? And he said, 200 people stood up. And everybody in that moment could feel true compassion. They could feel the suffering that's part of humanity and that's part of the great mystery of life. And I wanna give you one more example that really blew me away. And it's example Cornfield gave too. It's about two women in Canada who were forced to go out on a freezing cold night. One of them was taking her pregnant daughter to the hospital and the other was driving to take care of her sick dad. They were driving, they didn't know each other. They were driving on the same road, but in opposite directions, okay? And it was freezing and there were tremendous winds and they both needed to stop at some point because a huge tree had fallen in the road and they couldn't get past it. So now there's this big tree and here they are. They get out of their cars and they share their stories. And then they exchange their car keys, each in the other's car and continue their journey. When we open beyond ourself, we realize that we're part of an extended family. We aren't separate, we're interdependent. We can hold all of the beauty and all of the pain of life in our heart and we can breathe together with courage and compassion. And so I wanna close with something from Reverend Mary Morrissey. Um, and, and she called this, a, um, a spiritual principle. She said, you are a child of God who is the unconditional giver of life itself. By learning to give without keeping score, you enrich your relationship with God, with others, and with yourself. It is, the, it is, it is in the act of giving that you truly receive. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning and have a great week.